computer. Let me see if I could get it. Yeah, just all Lucila, just recording. I'm setting up the recording. I mean, yeah, right, it's recording. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Lucille. Um, it's the one we did with the immune system, the exam that was on the 6th of April from mm -hmm. 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's what I'm not seeing the grades for anymore. Okay, I'll look into that. When, when the class finishes, I'll look into that and get back to you, okay? Okay, okay. no problem. Thank All you. right, let's go. So digestion, is digestion important? I train it out to you all. What do you all understand by digestion? When you hear about, you know, digestion and so on. You break a lung of food so your body can get the nutrients from it. Right. Now, does when the food tasty, does it have an influence if you'll eat it or not? Of course, yes. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. All right, that is true. And what is the most, when you think about food in general, think about food in particular when you're buying it outside and so on. What one component is almost consistent with all types of food? It has one particular element that they always put in it. And what do you think it is? Something that you find in the kitchen and it's salt. white. Salt. You ever realize that? Anybody ever taste food without salt? <laughs> Anybody ever taste a pilau where they forget to put salt in it? Yes. Mm. It tastes rather special. Huh? <laughs> it tastes special to say the least. And why do you think salt is so important? Anybody? So in other words, our bodies recognize food with salt as quote unquote good tasting food. Whereas food without salt quote unquote, is not good tasting food. Why do you think this is so? Does salt, is salt important to our bodies? And if so, what organ system is salt particularly important for? The nervous system. The nervous system, right? And the nervous system is closely associated with two other systems and that brings about movement. What are those two other organ systems? In terms of bringing up movement, if you want to stand up, you need your nervous system and two other organ systems. What are the other two organ systems? Muscular system. Muscular, muscular system muscular. and? Skeletal. Skeletal. Excuse me. Yes, the skeletal, most critical, right? So in other words, for the proper functioning, as you looked at it in SNF1, for the proper functioning of the nervous system, you need to have the uh, salt present uh, for the generation of action potentials in particular. Right? Without the generation of action potentials, you will not have muscle contraction. When you think about muscles, skeletal muscle in particular, once they receive an action potential from or via the nervous system, via, of course, the neurons, so the neurons, you have these nerves which branch off from the body, of course, starting from the central nervous system, the brain, via the um, your spinal cord, then you have the, the branches coming off of the spinal cord, and they go to all and every part of the body as it relates to muscles. When these muscles receive an electrical impulse, which in essence is what an action potential is, they respond to that by contracting. When that impulse is removed, right, they go back to their relaxed state, which is lengthen. Contract, relax, right? Sorry, contract, yeah, contract, stimulus, relax, no stimulus. So therefore, when you don't have salt, if you were to go back and thinking about the generation of the action potential, first of all, the first thing that happens on these neurons, you have a specialized area known as the axon hillock, which is just below the cell body, which is just below the nucleus of the nerve cell. You have this area where, which is very high in concentration of sodium gates. So when it reaches a certain threshold level, what happens is these gates open and sodium rushes in. When the sodium rushes in, normally inside the membrane is negative. Now these sodium ions have a positive charge. So when they rush in, you have a change in polarity. It changes from inside negative to inside positive. And that process is known as depolarization. So sodium rushes in, it depolarizes the membrane. And now you have the negative attracts this positive charge that has now come in. And that's how it actually moves down along the inside of the membrane. Ever so often you have the nodes of Ranvier, which also have sodium gates, sodium channels present, and they act as booster stations to boost the charge as it goes along the length of the axon on the nerve itself. So salt is critical. Salt, 
composition of salt is sodium chloride, sodium ions critical for the generation of action potentials. So which is why our bodies, somewhere written in one of those 23 pairs of chromosomes, uh, right along in terms of the DNA that it contains within those chromosomes is a message that, hey, salt important. When you're, when you're cooking food, it's supposed to be salty. And when it tastes salty, it is delicious. And when it is delicious, you eat it. That is a way in which the body ensures that its salt level is optimal. Because of the fact, it's hard. In other words, we are hardwired for eating salty food, right? Of course, we have to be careful because some of us, you know, like too much salty food and that could lead to hypertension, but that's another story. But the main thing to appreciate, salt is, a, in terms of the body, is recognized as tasty. One of the major reasons why you need that salt, proper functioning of the nervous system. When that works well, you could have muscular contraction, skeletal muscle we're looking at in collaboration with the skeleton facilitates movement. Right, so which is why when you do, when you don't have salt or low levels of salt, you feel so weak. Particularly if you have meat, let's say for the day, you have to be careful to keep your salt levels up. Right, you feel very, very weak. But interestingly, if you are in a state where you you're dehydrated, or let's say you've lost a lot of fluid either through um, watery stools, in particular. One of the things I have to do, of course, is take a rehydrant, rehydrant in terms of G-Sol or something that has electrolytes in it. And when they speak about the electrolytes in particular, notwithstanding sodium ions, which as I mentioned before, critical for generation of action potentials, but also calcium and chloride ions as well. They are critical for that whole process. All right, we good so far? Let me hear you. Any, any, we good so far? Chelsea, yeah, we okay? Yeah. All right, so let's go. Question number one, which of the following is not a function of the digestive system? Aha. Uh -huh. Let's have a look at it. And when we finish here, I'll give you all the link to this so you all could at your leisure, you know, go through. I'll post the link in the, um, the chat. It's our online source, so you could actually go through it whenever you're ready. And um, you could go through it as many times as I wish, you know, each time. So, okay, so who think, who think they have the answer for the first one? Which of the following is not a function of the digestive system? What do you think? All right, I'll give you 30 seconds. Um, have a look at it. Have a look at it, 30 seconds. Okay, all right, so where's the answer for me? Let me hear you. So what does it do in terms of, which is not a function of the, of the digestive system? Somebody was answering, and when you'll answer, you get extra credit. I have my little tingling -ling here, and I'll take note. So when you answer a question correct today, and I must applaud you all for actually taking, you know, the interest in your work to coming out um, at this time, that is quite commendable of you. And if you answer correct, Oh, just try. Just give it a try. You'll get, um, you'll get ex, you'll get extra credit for it. Yeah, go ahead. Who is this one? Dahia. Um, no, Robina. Robina, go ahead. All right. Um, transporting nutrients to other organs. Transporting that is not a function. Correct is right. That is quite right. All right. E and let's look at the other answers. Does it? The, the digestive food, does it take in the digestive system? Does it take in food? That was Ravina. Let me just make sure yeah, you got yeah. your mark, Ravina. Ravina, ting ling ling. See Ravina, my general. Good. Well done there, Ravina. Yeah, so it takes in food. Does it digest food to small molecules? Does it break it down? Yes, sir. Yeah, it does. Does it absorb nutrient molecules? Where does most in terms of the digestive tract, where does most of the absorption of nutrients take place? In the mouth, stomach, yeah, go no. ahead. 
go ahead. Small intestine, large intestine. But there's more some. Yeah, the small intestine. Correct small is intestine. right. Very good. Yes. In the small intestine, that's where most of the absorption of food takes place. Very good. Nutrients. Does it eliminate non-digestible waste? Yeah. At the end of the digestive tract, you have the elimination of these wastes. So that is true. So the odd man out is indeed E, as Rabina said, transport nutrients. What what organ system facilitates the transport of nutrients to other organs? Which organ system? Let me hear you. The lymphatic system. Is that right, Ravina? Yes. Sir. You're actually right. You're partially right. Um, the lymphatic. The as else. Well. What you're saying? That is right. Correct is right. Okay. Very good. Right? So not only the lymphatic. And what does the lymphatic carry? The lymphatic is very specialized for, for transporting a nutrient. Which one is that? What nutrient does it, it transport in the body? Carbohydrates, proteins, or fats? Fat. What you saying? Who's that one who answered there? Eleanor, sir. What you saying, Eleanor? Yeah, right, via the lacteals, very good. And why, why, do you know why it is that the lymphatics, why they transport fats, preferably as opposed to, let's say, it being transported in the blood system? You have any idea? It's one word. Four letters, begins with S, ends in E, and it has a Z in it because of the something of the fat molecules. Correct Size. is right. Yeah, because they're big. Remember in the capillaries, the capillaries are really small. They're on the order of one micro. Now remember the diameter of a red blood cell. So it's less than one micrometer, about 0 0.5 micrometer. We spoke about the size of a micrometer. If you take your thumb and index finger, put it together. Now pull it apart. That space between your thumb and index finger, that's one millimeter. Divide that into a thousand, that's one micrometer. So you can imagine a capillary is like half of that size. So the thing is, when you're looking at these um, fat, the fat molecules, lipid molecules, they are rather big. And they, if they travel any capillaries, they'll get stuck. So in terms of the body, what it has done in terms of adaptations, it preferably will transport fats through the lacteals in terms of the lymphatic because of the fact the, the lymphatics are wider than the capillaries and therefore you can have free movement of the fat. So that's why it's preferably transported in the lacteals. Very good there with all those who answered, uh, Ravina and Eleanor, that was quite good. Let's go on to number two. What does digestion of food refers to? Digestion of food, what does it refer to? Hmm, that's a good one. So is it D? D, allowing large molecules to cross cell. You're very close, not large ones, but? Uh, small molecules. Small oh, ones. Uh, so I'll give you a credit for that, for being so brave to answer that one. That was a tricky one. What name is it? Chelsea. Chelsea. Very good. Chelsea Mahes, very good. Right? But the small ones. Um, in terms of allowing small molecules to cross cell membranes and be absorbed by the tract lining because the large ones can't cross because they're too big. So the small molecules in terms of digestion, they allow the small molecules to cross and be absorbed. All right, so that's very good. Let's go on to the next one. Very good, Chelsea. Um, strictly speaking, something refers to the breakdown of food by enzymatic action. Digestion. Digestion, well done. Who is that one? Shady. Mm -mm. Shady Davis, well done, Miss Davis. Yeah. All right, let me give you a, 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 a shout, right? Very good, uh, Shady, indeed. It's, so the answer there is digestion. Could you think of any enzyme? What enzyme acts in the mouth to break down carbohydrates? It's present in saliva. So therefore, the enzyme is called salivary something, and it begins with an E in the mouth, salivary, and it rhymes with bamilase. Bamilase. What you saying, correct? Is right. who's, that one, who's that one who answered there? Chelsea again. Chelsea again, right, right. Keep it coming. The more you answer, the more points make prizes, right? Very good. So I'll be down for two, two answers, right? So salivary amylase breaks down carbohydrates in the mouth. Very importantly there. Let's move on. Let's give me one, literally, give me 30 seconds. I'll be right back.
All right, yes. Right. So. Excuse me, so somebody is asking to be letting into the class. Done, completed. Yeah, I did already. Yeah, I saw it on the chat. Thanks very much. Uh, let her in uh, already. But thanks for letting me know. All right, so digestion, first it breaks down of food, as we mentioned, in terms of in the mouth, carbohydrates, salivary amylase breaks it down in these macromolecules into glucose, which are simpler ones. It all depends on the type of sugar, mind you, in terms of the component uh, monomers or uh, simpler sugars, the complex sugar is broken down into. Which of the following is not correct? Look at number four. Which of the following is not correct? So is that C? Digestion of foods is a process that occurs inside of cells. Correct, it's right. Yes, yes. As you know, it, it occurs extracellularly uh, within the digestive tract, right? So that takes place outside of cells. So therefore, C is incorrect. What name is that one? Diana. Diana, Rambarath, or Archibald, or Haley. Yeah. Well, we have three. Archibald, we have three Dianas any class. Excellent. Good work. Taste is due solely to simulation of receptors in the nose. Is that true or false? False. 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 Why, why do you say somebody false. answer false? Why do you say false? In terms of taste. Think about it. When when you when you have a cold, do you, do, do the, does your food taste funny? If you have a cold yeah, and your nose no is stuffed up. Taste. Yeah? Yeah, so that would imply then that taste is actually due to not only uh, receptors in the tongue, but also in your, your nose or your nasal cavity. So when we are thinking about in terms of taste, right, we perceive how, how things actually taste has a lot to do as well with how we smell it. So it's a combination of the two that affects the taste, which is why you must try some. If you hold your nose and look to um, eat something, you will realize it tastes differently, right? as opposed to when your nose is not pinched. So that, of course, hints to the fact strongly that in order, when you taste something, tasting also, not only is it the gustatory sensation on the tongue, but also involves inhalation of those molecules which are detected in the nasal, in nasal pharynx, within the nose itself, all right? So that answer, of course, for this one will be false, as you rightly said, this is not true, false. Very good, who answered that one? Shady. Shady. Shady Davis, all right, I take note, yeah, I, I, I got you. There's the second time you answer? Yes. What you're saying, you're on a roll. That is good. <laughs> da, 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 da. Come on, come on, there we go. Good, well done. Let's go on to the next one. Which of the following sequences does not trace a part of food through the digestive tract in the correct order? All right, so where does food enter first of all? Well, no, it that don't necessarily mean it's true. Which of the following does not trace? So which of these so the is answer false? Is C. Yeah, because is C? These, mm -hmm. yeah, because the small intestine before the large one. Correct. Always remember. Very good. Small intestine. Now, three people answer that. Let me hear the names of the three people who answer that one. Diana. Diana. Very good, Diana. That's Diana. Archibald yeah. again. Ma and the here, sir. The here, the Rosales, good. And was it Rabina? Rabina, Rabina, Rabina. Mm -hmm. good, very good, good, right? So very true. The small intestine comes before the large intestine, as shown here. This one comes before this, so you know. Therefore, this one is incorrect. Let's look at number seven. What are chisel-shaped teeth used for biting? Incisors. Right, incisors, as some people say, or some people would pronounce it incisors. Okay. Right, and some people like to bite. We have any biters here? Don't answer that question. As they say in the courts, that is leading the witness, right? So incisors, those are the biting ones. Those are the ones, you know, and eat in your KFC, they, they allow tearing caring of things, right? So very importantly, those are the incisors, all right? Good, who answered that question there? That was Miss Rock? Diana. Diana, okay, Diana, good. Very good, Miss Archibald. Keep it coming. Mm -hmm. Let's go again. So nerves and blood vessels are found within what part of a tooth? Let me hear some new voices. Let's see. 
see. You say, see the pulp. Ah, mm. Yes, that is quite true, within the pulp. What, what is the enamel of your tooth? That is the outside. The outside. Is it hard or soft? Hard. Why do you think it's hard? So you could grind bone. So you could grind bone. <laughs> Anybody here like to chew bone, you know, chicken bone? Nom, nom, yep. nom. And when you finish, you have a little pyramid on your plate. <laughs> yeah, a little, little dust. Yeah. So that's one thing. Yes. Right. So it has to be hard. But the pulp is a soft part that has the nerves running through them. And interestingly enough, from a forensic perspective, for those of us who, for those of us who watch CSI and so on, if they find a skeleton, let's say, days on or months on, I don't know the exact length of time, but they could extract the DNA from the pulp and they could use it to identify the person if that person does have a sample of the DNA on the database. So in essence, a tooth is like a vault. It preserves the, tissue, the um, pulp that is within it. So, you know, if they do find a skeleton, what they could do is then drill it. They'll have to drill the tooth and extract that pulp, um, which is kept in very good condition because of the fact it's sealed within the enamel. So that is something very important to note if you do get into forensic science. Let's go to number nine. So you give me my mark, Natasha. It's a good thing you reminded me. <laughs> Natasha Robert Thomas. Yes, Thank you. I surely did not, but I am now doing it. Yes. So D for number. The next one is D. The next one. Um, which of the following is not correct? Number nine. D, sir. D. Why you say D? You're right, but let me hear why you say that. Mom's and the mom's is not a viral infection of the tonsil. What is it? What, when, you, when your tonsils are inflamed, what is that called? It's some kind of itis. And it has the word tonsil in it. Tonsillitis. Yes, yes, very good. So who answered our question there? Who was the primary one? Diana Brewster. Diana, very good, Miss Brewster. Ms. Diana. Diana Brewster, where you are, Diana. Very, Diana Haley Brewster, very good. That was very well done. Right, I know we had some supplementals, but we'll just take the primary one there. Let's go again. Which of the following comparisons is incorrect? Let's look at number 10. Definitely the pharynx. The pharynx? Why you say that? What it should be? As associated larynx. with the larynx. Yeah, larynx. All right. So who answered that question? Eleanor. Eleanor, Miss Saunders, good. And somebody else? Who, who piped in afterwards? Archibald. Archibald. Diana, right, very good, Diana. Mm -hmm. Right? So very importantly, in terms of, not the pharynx, the pharynx is, but is the larynx. Where would you find the pharynx? Where is the pharynx located? Superior or inferior to the larynx? So is it? Oh, Right, uh, the pharynx is located superior to the larynx, is above it, right, in terms of the location. So, but so, but the association is larynx for your voice box. That is important. And also associated with the lar yeah, so the answer there is correct. Very good. Let's go to the next one. Um, let's go to 12. No, let's look at 11. We could do 11. Which of the following comparisons is not correct? So bolus, food mixed with saliva in the mouth, is that true? Yeah. Yes. yes Time, food mixed with gastric secretions leaving the stomach, is that true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yes, true. Sir. Gastric juice, secretions from the intestinal glands, is that true? No. Eh. no. That is from the stomach glands. What you're saying, correct is right. Who's that one? Let me see. Who's that one who answered it? Huh? <laughs> Archibald again. Archibald, yes, yes, keep it coming, man. Keep it coming. That's very good, Anna. And some other, who, who else pipe in and tell me no for when I was going for EM? Sure. Who's that? Sure. Um, sure. I know it's warm. Name, name, please? Dahia. Dahia, okay. Dahia yeah, Rosales, yeah. good. Right, and who else answered? Rabina. Sure. Rabina. Wait, 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 Ravina, very good. See that? Very good. Anybody else? Somebody else pipe in? Mm -hmm. Anybody Shady. else? Shady? Shady Davis, Miss Davis. Very good. Yeah. Good. Well done. 
Well, they're doing well. Let's go to 12. Sphincters are muscles that incube tubes and act as valves. Is that true or false? Let me ask somebody a directed question. Chelsea. I don't think I hear Chelsea. You know, I did hear Chelsea already. Sorry. Um, let me see. Diane Katwaru. Yes. You there, Miss Katwaru? I'm still Diane? here. I'm driving from work. Okay, yeah, yeah. fire bond that. I don't want you to be on the news. Point yeah, it, and you take it easy. Okay, I'll move okay. <laughs> to somebody okay. else. I don't want you to be on news at all. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. Sarah. Sarah, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So let me see. Sphincters, they encircle tubes and act as valves. Is that true or false? What do you think? That is true. Yes. Well done. Well done. All right. That is indeed true. Well done. Let me ask somebody else to explain that. Well done, um, Sarah. Somebody want to explain it? Could you give me an example of one of the sphincters that encircle that act as a valve? I'll give you a hint. Some people have is associated with acid reflux disease. What sphincter is the main sphincter that is associated with acid reflux disease? So it's found that it's found that at the top of the stomach, superior to the fundus, and at the base or inferior to the esophagus. So what do you think they call it? Or what do you think they name that sphincter? So it's, that's not the esophageal sphincter. You. Very, very good, the esophageal sphincter. Name? Shania Wilson. Very good, Shania. Yeah, that's what they call it. And so for persons who have um some people do have issues in terms of uh, acid reflux disease. And anybody want to explain what acid reflux disease is all about? So that is when like the digestive enzymes in your stomach coming up the tube and back up like your throat, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly what it is. Because of the fact the valve, the close off valve isn't working, right? So superior in, in terms of the one that keeps the um, gastric acid or the gastric juices in the stomach, they're acidic in terms of their pH is below seven. So what happens is when you lie down at night, you no longer, you don't have that valve to close it off, so it comes right back up your esophagus and into your mouth. So you get this burning sensation in your mouth itself. Who is that to answer that question there? Who answered that one? Shania. Shania, very good, Shania. Wilson, Miss Wilson, very good. All right, and that is what acid reflux. So this one, sphincters are muscles that encircle tubes. Um, this is very true. Um, that is as Sarah mentioned. Okay, good. Let's go again. Do, do, do. Da, 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 da. Let's look at 15. If HCL penetrates the mucus and the stomach wall, auto digestion of the wall begins and an ulcer results. Is that true or false? True, sir. Who's that answer in there? Dahia, sir. Dahia. Miss Rosales, very good. All right, good. Yeah, and that is very true. Anybody, um, so you can get auto digestion. So therefore, right, the mucus actually protects the stomach wall from being digested. So if you no longer have the mucus, if any, that protection is gone. So therefore the wall will begin to get auto digested and it does form a ulcer resulting, good. Let's go to 16. So, so, one, go so one question, why, why were the mucus, why will we lose the mucus? Well, it could be, usually they find that most of the times it is associated with the presence of H. pylori, a bacteria in the stomach. And that causes the thinning of the mucus and facility, which facilitates um, ulcer formation. So the presence of a bacteria is the main reason why that you would have that. Another reason why it could be if you are eating too much acid um, foods, you know, that could be a reason consistently eating things which are acidic. So in other words, then you're, you're causing the stomach to go into overdrive in terms of mucus production. And the taste like that, you could sometimes have thinning of the 
mucus layer. But most of the times, like as I said, is because of the presence of H. pylori, a bacteria that causes the thinning of the mucus layer in the stomach itself. All right. Okay, Good. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the next one, which of the following substances will cause the release of secretin from the duodenal wall? First of all, what is secretin? Me? The answer is D, HCL, hydrochloric acid in chyme, right? That is true, right? So what, what is secretin? Right, anybody, what is secretin? Well, clearly it's an enzyme, and as the name implies, secretin is a hormone which release into the bloodstream to stimulate secretion by the liver and pancreas. And on that topic, all right, who answered that uh, uh, question? Who answered 16 there? Name, please. Ursel. Pardon, Ursel? Yes, sir. Ursel with a E? L-U-C-I-L-L-E. Oh, Lucille. L-U-C-I-L-L-E? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, got you. Good. Lucille uh, Moses Gay, thank you. So let's look at 18. I always like 18. Actually, we could look at 17 as well. What allows chyme to enter the small intestine? So it's, 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 right? So what, what are called? What, oh, sorry, you jumped to 18. We're coming back to that one, and you're right. So it's A. So when we come to 18, remind me, you'll get your points on that. We're looking at 17. So it's A. So it's B. Sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach. So we're talking about, so it's leaving the stomach and it's going into the small intestine. So would it be a valve between the esophagus and the stomach? Um, not necessarily true because as we just mentioned, that is the one that is important for preventing it or which if it is malfunctioning causes the acid kind to go up into your mouth. So it wouldn't be that one in terms of between okay. the esophagus. You were partially right. It doesn't the stomach. But it is the second one, B, a sphincter between the pyloric. B. Correct, the B. pyloric sphincter. Very good, right? So the esophageal sphincter is the one to the top. The pyloric sphincter, very good. The one between the stomach and the small intestine. So who answered pyloric sphincter there? Who that? Eleanor. Eleanor, very Eleanor. good, Eleanor. Mm -hmm. Let me go with Eleanor. Eleanor Miss Saunders, very good. Mm -hmm. Right, and somebody else answered as well. It was just one person, just one person, all right. Okay, good, that was very good. Now somebody went on to 18 already. Who it was who answered um, pancreas for this one? Izan. Is Answer 19 is B. Yes, 19 is B. I'm not seeing Lizanne now. Izan Rock. Or oh, Izan, sorry, my mistake, Miss Rock. Yes, good. And so 19 is B. 19 is B. What do you say? What is it? Where are the brush border enzymes found for 19? The answer B. B, is in the microvilli, right? The small, yeah, those are the brush borders. Okay. So that? It's true. That is Ooh, 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 a very dog dog. All your, the holsters full up already, and all they're shooting from the. No, that will not be false for so, 20. For nine, I reached yeah, 20 yet. Probably not 19. Yeah, still 20, at 19. Sure. I still at 19. I still at 19. Y'all are so eager, and I appreciate that. <laughs> right, y'all reached 20. And so I reached 20 yet. So it's still at 19. Right, so the microvilli, as we mentioned, very important there in terms of the brush border. That's where you get it, the brush border enzymes. The villi, of course, these are the larger ones that be that bear the microvilli. So on the villi, the villi, the larger projections, on the villi itself, you have these smaller projections, which are the microvilli, right? So, right, we gave credit to 19. So 20 now, let me hear you. Somebody was answering that one? False. Not true. So the end product of what? lipid protein and carbohydrate sure. digestion enter the blood capillaries okay. of the villi. I know what you're thinking. Um, so I said true from beginning, eh? The true, the end products of lipid protein and carbohydrate digestion. Because of the fact how I mentioned the lymphatics, that's probably why I thought it was false, that all the lipids, no, the majority of them go through the lymphatics, 
but some do go through the capillaries. So that's why, okay. you know, the end products, this answer will be true. I know that true, you off or how I mentioned the lymphatics. So I'm not mad at you, you'll get credit. So who answered that question? As false, yeah, because I know the reason here? behind it. Who's that? The here? So, that was answered as false. The here, okay. Lucille answered it as false, but we know the rationale behind her, so she will get points. Miss Lucille Moses, okay, very good. Anybody else who answered? I answered to Who's that? Shady. 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 Mm -hmm. Shady Davis, Miss Davis, very good. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Let's go on to another one. Let's jump forward. Which are the following? Which of the uh, 22? I like 22. Don't see. Which of the following will contain villi? And the answer is small intestine. Does the esophagus contain any villi? What is the function of the esophagus? The esophagus has one main function. What is it? To push your food down the stomach. Be a little more specific. From where to where? So you gave the end, the end result to the stomach. From where? From so where's the, the starting the point? From the mouth. From the mouth to the stomach. Very good. Remind me of your name. So Natasha Roberts Thomas. Natasha. So I tell you the small intestine too. Okay. Well, you'll get points as well. No problem. <laughs> and I didn't get my points for the for nine for nineteen. And who is this one who's talking here? Diana Brewster, sir. Okay, Miss Brewster. Well, you, well, you guys. Yes, sir. Lucy, too. I said small intestine. All right, Diana Brewster. I need to catch up. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you moving too fast for me? Oh, young people. Right, and also, so, Rock. Miss Rock, uh, is on. Yes. So, okay. I tune in late. This is a quiz or something. We do it? No, no, we're just going over. We just revise it with, by going through a quiz. Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan? All right. Good. All right. So uh, who else are missiles? So is Izan, who and who? We talked to other people. Izan, Diana, Natasha. and who? Natasha. Natasha. Right. Natasha. Okay. I didn't add for Natasha. Okay. Good. All right. We're going again. Now. Yes? Thank you. I said small intestine. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that one? Kizzy. Pardon? What name? Kizzy. Kizzy? Okay. Kizzy. Kizzy. All right. Miss Williams, very good. Okay. Gotcha. Let's go on again. Um, which of the following organs is not part of the large intestine? Let me ask somebody now. Hold on. Eh? Shanice, help me out. And more than this one, Shanice, which of the following organs is not part of the large intestine? So the large, we have the small intestine and the large intestine, all right, clearly. So the large intestine, let me see, well, the small intestine, how I always remember it is what, DJI? You know, I am a DJ, so it's DJI. Those are the parts of the small intestine, the duodenum, jejunum, or ileum. So which of the following is not part of the large intestine, you think? Well, so you give away the answer. I did? Oops. <laughs> oh, God, what's the answer? <laughs> At least you were paying attention. You were paying attention, so you picked it up. All right, so very good. You'll get the credit for it, Shanice. Mm -hmm. Let me put it up there. Very good. Mm -hmm. So Shanice rightly said, the small intestine is the duodenum, jejunum, and the ileum. So therefore, what is not part of the large intestine would be part of the small. So therefore, the answer is E. But the cecum, colon, rectum, and anal canal, they are all parts of the large intestine. Very good. All right, let's go to 25. Which of the following organs function to absorb water, salts, and store non-digestible material? Large, large intestine. What are you saying? OK, let me hear some names now. Lucille. Lucille. Okay, I got you, Lucille. Ravina. 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 I got you, I got you, Ravina. Who else? Diane, I got home. Which Diane? Katwaru. Which, you have a whole set. Yeah. Katwaru. Well, you have a Diane Katwaru. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. D, 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 D. 
D, D, D. Oh, yes, right. Gotcha, Diane, good. Who well, else, Shady? Miss Davis, yeah. very good. Anybody else I miss? That is it. All right, very importantly, right? Anytime you hear functioning of absorbing water, the large intestine, right? Salts, and of course, non digestible material. So, in other words, everything that is not digested, it goes through the large intestine, then, of course, the rectum and anus, right? So, the large intestine, very important. So, if you have something, you know, if you do have a situation where the large intestine is not absorbing water, what will happen to your stools? How would your stools be? Very dark. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. How would it look? How would it appear? Dark. Ah, go ahead. If, if the large intestine is not absorbing water, how would your stools appear? How would it be like? Probably would it be full? And... Would it be full and hard or would it be yes. like? Yeah, yeah. that's like that. Which one would it be like? Yeah, it would be, it would be like... It would be wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, diary. Like... <laughs> right? And you're spraying it all over the bowl. All right? So that's what diarrhea... One of the issues with diarrhea is the lack of the large intestine absorbing the water. Right? And that's why you have watery stools and you're spraying it all over the place. Anybody ever had diarrhea? <laughs> yes? No? I remember when I was younger, about, I, to this day, I still remember when I was 14 years old, I was by my aunt, she made a tuna salad. And which is why to this day, I kid you not, I will open my tin of tuna, let's say if it's too much tuna, I will put it in a container and put it in the fridge, but I will always throw it away. I don't know why I'm wasting my time, you know, to put it there. Anyhow, I digress. So my aunt made tuna salad, and I remember it was, she, it was delicious, yum, 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 she left it outside. And later that evening, getting into early night, probably closer to seven, she made that around probably closer to lunchtime, 12, 12 12.30. And I went and I ate again. And as soon as I ate it, my, as I say, my stomach started to tumble. And you know when you reach the toilet and as soon as you come back off, you have to go back again, right? That's what, that what happened in terms of watery stools, right? And how would you, when you have in a case like that, you have diarrhea, right? You're not only using losing water, but what other something that is very critical you're losing? What follows water in your electrolytes. body? Electrolytes. Electrolytes. Be a little more specific. What, which electrolyte in particular that is very important for nerve function? Sodium. Excellent. What name is that? It is that? Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Right. So you lose that. And which is why you which is why usually when you have diarrhea, you feel very weak, not so? You know, and I always say, all due respect to other religious denominations, when they start to make promises with Jesus. You ever reach that point? When they start to make promises with Jesus. Oh, gosh, if it is, you get me away from this one. <laughs> I will call my mother. I promise I'll call. I will make up my bed when I get up in the morning. I will promise I'll cook. I'll cook food. I ain't go, I ain't go pout when they tell me to cook, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. When they start to make those promises, you know that you have it bad, right? And most could they... So not only do you need, because of the fact you're losing water, but you have to remember in the body, loss of water is followed by loss of salt. Could you give me an example? When you're losing water, the way salt follows in your body? Somewhere in your body, when you lose Penny. water and you get salt follows it. Um, Penny. Huh? Yeah. Sweat. Yeah. Penny. When you're sweating, yes, very good, very good. Very good, uh, Sarah. When you're sweating, Right? That is what happens. Yeah. So that's why you so, so you sweat, as some of us well aware, if you happen to taste it, it is salty. So when, it, when you're rehydrating, that's always important. Not only do you need to take in water, but you also have to take in salt. And you would see that as well when somebody is brought in in your professional career. Let's say somebody is presented in casualty or, yeah, in casualty or they're yeah, admitted. Oh, yeah. right. Correct, a, a saline drips. They never just put water, but they put them on saline, right? And as you learn, that has to do as well with maintaining of the osmolality within the body and so on. You learn that later on in physiology. But most critically is because of the fact you've lost salt. You have lost a lot of salt in terms of any diet. Similarly, because you're losing water, you know, you can take my word for it. Don't go and taste diarrheal um, watery stools, but it is salty. You lose salts. 
So you have to rehydrate, hence the reason drips, which is um, uh, ultrafiltrated water to remove the waste product. And then of course they put saline, sodium chloride in it most critically. Then of course you have Ringer's solution. You have other types, but the major one, the, what is it, zero point, how much, how much percentage saline? It is 0.7% saline, saline drip. Saline drip, um, full concentration. Yeah, it's, it's um, the saline drip, what is the salt concentration in it? It's like 0 0.7. I don't know why 0 0.7 sticking in my head. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll soon find out. Right, so you have to get that back in. So the large intestine, sometimes it doesn't function as it is, as it does in terms of absorbing water. So you lose that water, all right? Very important to get the rehydration. And when you think about it, what do they use for oral rehydration? If it is you have a baby and you go to the drugs, so there's something that they sell. What is it? Pedialyte. So it's not the, um, the g soil thingy. Thank you very much. Yeah, Pedialyte, both of you all are correct. So I'll take both of your names. Remind me your names, please. Shania Wilson. Hang on to your wagon wheels there, Shania. Um, where is it? Where's the button on this? Okay. Very, that was very good. Um, Shania, where's Shania? QRS, Shania Wilson. Very good. And who is the other person? Eleanor. Eleanor. Eleanor Saunders. Very good, Miss Saunders. Good. Right? So you do have both Pedialyte and then you have G-Sol. Anybody ever tasted it? It tastes very salty. And in fact, so here we're saying, sir, sir. But if it is, let's say somebody, um, if somebody, um, you know, whom by me, they're dehydrated. Rehydration. The coconut water is good too, but I don't have enough oh, yeah. salt. Yeah. But it has electrolytes and that is important. Yeah. Actually, it probably does have salt, but probably low amounts. You see, there's the funny thing. You know, even when we taste something sweet, when you think about juices and so on, you know, there is salt in it, you know, but we don't taste it, but it's there, right? Salt and sugar. But in terms of a rehydrant, you hit the nail on the head, right? That is um, probably one of the better ones, coconut water. Because, of course, coconut water is made for the development of the plant itself, right? So, you know, that is a little um, sealed vessel. Of course, it dries out so it could float on the sea. Then when it washes up on store, it get root and so on. So for the endosperm or the newly developing um, plant, it does have a storage of nutrients. So at least it, until the leaves come out and can begin to photosynthesize, you know, so it has the nutrients there. So just a, a quick reminder in terms of if somebody, let's say at home or otherwise with you and they, let's say they're suffering dehydration in terms of diarrhea, this is a very good a homemade oral. And this is all what G-Cell is. I mean, it packaged and it looking pretty. Gatorade is just glorified the sugar water. That's all it is. Pedialyte, glorified sugar water. That's all it is. Put it in a nice package, put a nice color, you know, and, but you can make it yourself. Six level teaspoons of sugar, half a level teaspoon of salt. Notice the, the, it's a 12 to one uh, ratio. And then one liter of water. So six teaspoons, half a teaspoon, and one liter of water, mix that up, give it to them. And you see they bounce back within like 10 minutes. It's incredible, you know, we just go to show the importance of these things, you know, to your life. All right, so that's very good. Let's go on. Oh. Yep, somebody had a question? No. Nope. So the answer is A. A, yeah, A. Which one, for 26? Yeah. 26. A. The answer, which of the following organs function to absorb water, so, oh, sorry. Eat something is the blind end of the ascending colon. Quite right, see, come. Sometimes you will see it spelled C A E. All right, so who answered that one? The blind end of the ascending colon? Shania. Shania, very good, Shania. Shania Wilson. So somebody else answer as well. Eh? Okay, Diane. and who was Diane. that person? Me, Michael. Diane. Diane, come into your Michael. 
Diane, which um, Diane Rambarat Katwaru? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. And then Michael. Um, yeah, that was, you know, you say something there uh, uh, is on, that makes sense actually. Yeah. If you don't say your last name, that will actually work quite well. So, excuse, I gotta leave now, please. Okay. Who is this one? Who we'll leaving? Yeah. Okay, okay, Ms. Brewster. All the best. Yeah. Right. As I mentioned, it's been recorded. So, look for the link on WhatsApp in a, a couple of hours. Okay, great. So, which of the following? What is the time? Five o'clock already? Time just fly when you're having fun. Okay, we're wrapping up in a, in a little bit. But time is so much fun. Aren't you all having fun? Yes. We yes. Okay. We're wrapping up yes, that. Sir. Okay. We're wrapping up. I don't want to bore, bore you all to that. Let's look at 30. In diarrhea, too little water has been absorbed by the large intestine. In constipation, too much water has been absorbed. Is that true or false? True. True. And who is that? That's Michael. Correct. You're not explaining that one, Michael, for me? Um, if it's if if the the intestine not absorb any water, mm -hmm. stay inside of the intestine, and mm -hmm. then when the reasons too all the water come out with these two. Correct, correct, very good. And yeah, then yeah. Go ahead. Oh well, and if it absorb too much water, then mm -hmm. it will not have enough water in this tool and it come very out good. hard. And comes out hard. Now, if, now think about it. Quite right. Yes, Michael said very good. Again, points on that one, Michael. If the stool is coming out hard, does it? Could it um, tear the lining of your, uh, let's say, rectum? Could you have rectal tearing occurring? Or is there some yes, mechanism yes, that yes, actually yes, prevents yes. that from happening? Yeah, in, in extreme cases, you could have it. But usually, what you have to remember, mucus is secreted by the epithelial lining of your large intestine. So not with sand in the, the water, but you remember mucus is always secreted, which is why, you know, when you think about it, you know, you, when you look at the fecal matter, when it does come out, well, we don't really examine it, but it usually has a bit of mucus over it, right? But sometimes depending on how dry it is and also the contents of your diet itself, you could have rectal tearing based on that, particularly in newborns. I'm sure some people might be uh, familiar with that, you know, it could have rectal tear, and so you always have to be careful because that area of rectum is very delicate where that is concerned. Very good. And on, let's go to thirty one. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Excuse me, Diane. Diane, yes. Um, yes. I'm, I'm leaving the class. I'm going. To, I'm going to go to the next class. Right? I'm no problem. Right? All the best. It will be recorded. Take care. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks for coming. Okay, okay. milk and magnesia. True. Milk up acts as a laxative because it makes. So explain why that one is true, please. All right. So first of all, is it true? No, it's milk up magnesia. That part is true. Is it a laxative because it makes the colon slippery? No. 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 It that is not uh, true. It's fault. So half of it is true, but the other half is not. Milk up magnesia. Is it a laxative or does it prevent? Um, it is a laxative when you're constipated, you take milk and magnesia. It has so much of these things, right? But it, do, it doesn't work by making the colon slippery. But what it does, it's a lax, it is a laxative, a saline laxative. And the way it works is that it prevents water absorption, right? But what, what could you take that makes the colon slippery? Could you think of a substance that is just by its very nature? You find it in the kitchen that is very slippery in a bottle. And you use it to fry chicken. So oil? Oh, yeah. Oil. So any of any, any all for me. I remember back in my day, I want to sound like an artifact. But before, let's say you go back out to school, my mother now need to used to give seni, seni. Right, they give you a purge, but they sometimes they'll give you what? A kind of oil that you used to sell. Cod liver oil. Castor oil. Castor oil. oil. Thank you. Castor oil. Made from, is a plant, the castor plant, castor seed. Right? So castor oil. Let's see if you could have a look quick at castor oil. Uh, I don't know if cod, cod liver oil might do the same trick. But I remember castor oil. Hmm, for your air, for your hair. 
right? But it's also, let me see, it's from a, it's from a seed. Clearly, they extract it from a seed, cast a seed. But cast oil, they say, use that as a perch. <laughs> you should take a little tablespoon of castor oil, right? But of course, you don't do that anymore. I don't think people use it anymore, castor oil. But it, it, it's just to give you a good it's a clean out. And the way that one would work is because it makes the colon slippery. Let's go on. Three more and then we done. Which of the following organ is considered an accessory organ of digestion? Liver. 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 Right, so the stomach, the esophagus, ascending colon and rectum. So what is an accessory? How do you define an accessory organ of digestion? Anybody? So when food not um, directly passing through it. Like what you're thinking, right? I like what you're thinking. So it's not directly connected to the alimentary canal. That's what you're thinking. It sounds good to me. Let's have, ooh, this one is better. That one is good. Ooh, I like this. This um, this is the one, you know, you'll see in your labs. Right, you know, this side. And one thing I like about it with this visible body is how you could, with this one, the digestive system. Come on, where are you? Where are you? It provides um, mechanical and chemical tools, like um, mechanical terms and such as your teeth and the chemical to be like your saliva, salivary gland. In terms of the accessory organs? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, yes. So the accessory, as you quite rightly said, the accessory organs of digestion, and as Michael um, alluded to, Right, so the salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pack, they're not part of the digestive tract. So when you think about the entire digestive tract, right, so coming down here, it comes down, goes to the small intestines. Blah, 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 blah. It comes back out here, there's the cecum, right? Ascending transverse, descending sigmoid, colon, rectum, anus, right? So it do, it's not a direct, uh, part of it. Here you see the liver. It is away from, you know, the direct pathway in this regard. So, so the, as you see, the salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, they're not part of the digestive tract directly, but they do have their digestive roles. So which of the following is considered an accessory? And who was it who tell me this one, the liver? Well, I know Michael also piped in, so you'll get uh, Shady was on one. that one. And Shady was one as well. Uh, Shady, good. And Ravina. Ravina, very good. Ravina. Huh? Pardon? Izan Rock. Izan. Thank you, Izan. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's why, you know, it's considered an accessory because it's not directly related to the alimentary canal. All right. Let's do three more. Which of the following organs has both an endocrine and an exocrine? And this is probably one of the few. What comes to mind? Endocrine and exocrine. Which one? National Instrument of Trinidad and Tobago. Pancreas. The pan. Yes. The pancreas. Very good, Michael. You'll get uh, credit on that one. Right, so the pancreas is both an endocrine and exocrine function. In terms of endocrine, that means it secretes hormone. What hormone does the pancreas secrete? Something relating to sugar regulation in your body. Not insulin, insulin. but insulin. Okay, who, uh, I heard is on there. And who else did I hear? Natasha. Natasha, very good, Natasha. Right, insulin. Right? And so, and it also, what, uh, what um, digestive enzyme does the pancreas secrete? And you see that, right? Exocrine glands, trypsin, chymotrypsin to digest protein, amylase to the digestion of carbohydrates, and lipase to break down fat. So it does all. It breaks down carbohydrates, protein, and fats, and it, so it secretes enzyme in the form of trypsin, chymotrypsin, amylase, and lipase to break them down, all right? So that's where, in terms of the pancreas, endocrine function, it secretes the hormone insulin, exocrine, it secretes those um, 
digestive enzymes to break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Okay, two more, two more. Which of the following organ produces bile? Aha. Uh -huh. liver. Liver. It's not the liver. gallbladder. It's not the gallbladder. No. no. It's the gallbladder. Liver. Oh, the gallbladder. Let's store it. Oh, very good. <laughs> so always remember, that is a common mistake. You know, and in the heat of, let's say, a test or something, you'll, you see gallbladder, you're like, aha. Uh -huh. But no, the gallbladder only stores bile, but it is actually produced in the liver. Well, a million and one people answer that question. I'll try to get you all. Let me hear you know who answered that one. Well, I heard Michael. I, I heard Michael's voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing his voice because it's Ravina. Shania. Shady. Hey, Ravina. Shania. Yes, no. Shady. Yes. Right. Shania. Yes. Who else? Who else answered? That's it. Okay. Very good. In terms of that, let's go again. Which component? All right, two more, and then we'll call it a day. Which component in bile helps emulsify fat in the duodenum? First of all, what does emulsify mean? Could you give me another word for emulsify? It's not breakdown. Breakdown. Name, please. Shania. Shania, that was very good, Shania. Yeah, yeah it means a breakdown or breakup, right? And you know, when you're washing, when you're washing where's in the sink, let's say, and you now cook a stew chicken, so the pot greasy, and you put it, you know, and you fill it with water. And the, you know, the, when you look in the sink, you see like a layer of oil on top of the water. And what you will do then, you take a detergent, you squeeze or your wells quick or what have you not and you throw it in and what happens you'll ever do that and you see the oil layer just starts to break up into smaller little globules like little circles yeah. no, sir, i have no idea what you're talking about okay hold on let me see if we could pull up a youtube video on that youtube um, island, I think I'm a nice what you say you know with solution that's and emotions they they learned where why it is now um, split because water and oil they are not compatible. Correct. Right. So and in fact they use it in a number of, of um that very simple reaction. They use it, let's say number one, if there's an oil spill, you know, and you have these big globules, what do you think they go there in the sea with? I kid you not, they go with detergents to break up the the, the oils into smaller parts. I just want to let's see. Okay, this one looks like it, it gave me a little complex on me. I just wanted to get a simple. Um, let me let me do this search. Yeah, yeah he got, got a little complicated on me there. Emulsification of fats. I think this one looking simpler. This is a snippet for my digestion. By bile, they're getting complicated on me. I just wanted to show detergent. Let me. And how is that? How is this emulsification process? How does that fit into COVID to stop any spread of COVID? Anybody? If you answer that again, two points. How does the emulsification of fat or the spread of COVID? Anybody want to go with that one? The soap when you wash your hand does yes. break up the um, lipid by layer or the COVID. It don't make sense. I should go away. It don't make sense. You all know everything. That's an excellent explanation Have it in such a short space. Name? Eleanor. Eleanor. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. And a lot of people don't realize it. Right? Let me get two marks for that one because that was a little complicated. Right? What happens? Remember, these, all of these um, microorganisms, they do have a bilayer, lipid bilayer that surrounds it, right? So if you look at the structure of a virus, for instance, let's do that real quick. Uh, well, I don't want to look at it on YouTube, so let's just pull up another thing, right? So if you look at the structure, the structure of a virus, right? It does have a coat. Let's look at a simple structure. Um,
sugar proteins, the coat. Okay. Yeah, so if you're looking here, we're looking at a, a representation of a virus, a very simple virus, right? But one of the things you will notice, well, this coronavirus here, and even with these are, what these are, these are receptors, which are, yeah. Where my, where my image going? Okay, that's a, a bacteriophage we're looking at. Okay, right. So when you look at this general structure, all going around here, this is a lipid bilayer. And it's nothing more than it has fats, right? And these things which are protruding on the outside, these are receptors. What are receptors? They, they're used for different many things in terms of signaling and also for finding attachment to another cell. So usually the cell will have a corresponding. So let's say in HIV, you have the CXCR4 receptor. There's a corresponding receptor which are found on, let's say, dendritic cells and T cells so that they're able to identify them and are able to attach to it and then insert the genome into the cell. But I get beyond myself. Simple thing to note with the virus, it has this lipid bilayer, lipid, fat. So when you use a soap, which has or any type of detergent, so in fact, you could wash, you know how sometimes you see some of those things, oh yes, 199, yes, it could be used against um, COVID. This soap could be used, you know, to help you prevent, you know, ag against, um, stop the spread of COVID. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Very simply, any soap will do that. Any soap does that. Any de detergent will actually do that because what the detergent does, it emulsifies, it causes the breakup of this bilayer. And think about it, when this is broken up, the soap comes in, it breaks it up into smaller parts, this whole bilayer breaks down and now the viral core is exposed to the environment and it dies. So that's what that's why washing your hands are so important. The only the major reason why is because very simply, and not only for viruses, but bacteria, it works as well. Once they don't have a, you know, a very rigid coat. But all of those that have, once they have a bilayer, lipid bilayer, which you would find in back, most bacteria, and also with in, in particular with viruses, because viruses are exceedingly simple. Uh, something as simple as hand washing, using a soap, using a detergent, that will destroy it, right? So it's not very so difficult. I have a Go ahead, yes. Would these hand sanitizers work as good as the detergent? Seeing that hand it has alcohol in it? Alcohol, yeah. So alcohol has a similar reaction in terms of disrupting the lipid membrane. Now, which one is more effective? That's a very good question, which I never thought about. <laughs> You know, that's a very good question. Which one is more effective? For convenience, that's why, you know, um, they're both effective, right? Um, because looking at it from this perspective, in the lab, if you were to throw back your, your memory, and in terms of how they actually work, you remember when you used to clean the countertop? If you could throw back your memory, they used to have on the countertop 70, I don't know if you remember, 70% alcohol or ethanol on the counter in a, in a bottle. Yeah, a squeeze okay. bottle. So squeeze bottle. Let me see. Squeeze bottle. And so anybody know what is the importance of 70% ethanol? Why not 85% ethanol? Why is it important at the number 70? Huh, if you could get this one, it don't make sense. You, you, right? So you know these squeeze bottles, and in fact, they, they usually written on it 70% ethanol. I'm not seeing it here, right? But, but but if you look at hand sanitizers in general, you will see them, I'm not seeing the label, Purell, which is a good brand. I'm not seeing it, right? Here we go. I'm not seeing the ethanol content, right? If you notice here, they, they, they have it marked 70% alcohol. So what is the importance of this 70%? Anybody? Why not use 80%? Is there a difference between 70 and 80 percent? You get maximum. Yes, sir, I guess yeah. 80 mm percent -hmm. would be too strong. Mm, define, clear up yourself. Too strong in terms of this, it will destroy too many of the bacterial viruses. No, sir, too strong as that it could damage your skin. Oh, from that perspective. Um, I hear you. It, it does dehydrate. Well, the, the major cause, the one everything with alcohol. So, 70% will damage this, the um, bacteria cell more than 80%, I guess. It, 
No, no, that is not that is not totally true, right? There's a reason why you use seventy and not eighty percent, though, for a very simple reason. Go ahead, um, Miss Rock. Actually, I don't want to give the answer just yet. That is not totally true. Anybody else want to try? Why you use seventy percent and not eighty percent? Let me see. Think, just think logic from a logical perspective. Why would I use 70 and not something that is more? More than 70. So, 70. So maybe you're too harsh for your skin? Mm, not exactly. Really is, mm, not a, um, is, what is it? There? It is resistant. Yeah, um, create resistance. Oh, create resistance. I hear what they're talking about. You're thinking about um, look, looking in terms of antibiotic, antibiotic resistance. Um, mm, not exactly, but it's a very simple reason. When you're here, you will laugh. Why right, is they use 70 and not 80%? I recommend it from like... Go ahead, go ahead, let me hear you. <laughs> I don't know it's recommended. It, you're going, to, you're, you're starting right. Recommended for what? Recommended as what? You, 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 you're close, you're close. Anybody else want to try? Why you use 70% and not 80? You'll always see 70%, you know, on the hand sanitizers, but you wouldn't see 80%. And I mean, from a logical perspective, it sounds good. If it is that they're very good at destroying bacteria, why it is you wouldn't use more? And why wouldn't you want to use more? People would drink it, so. And you know that's very true. And so what they do, they actually put something in it. In terms of that ethanol in the lab, they put something in it that actually makes it taste bad. And it's also an irritant to your stomach. Because believe you me, 70% has 140 proof. You can't get, you can't even get that outside to buy. That's a high alcohol content. So they actually put something in those, um, when they sell it, for a stomach irritant to prevent people from doing exactly that, drinking it, because that will give that will make you drunk exceptionally quickly. Mm. So that's a that's a good point you raise there. But anybody, why this seventy percent? And they don't use eighty, but they would use seventy percent. Oh, the higher the higher it is, the less effective it would be. You're very very close. You're saying it, but you're not saying it. Um, yeah, you're very that's close. the percent. More huh? effective, so that's the core of the um, virus. Thank you. That's it. 70% is the optimal then. What they have found in terms of doing research, 70% will you get the maximum effect at 70% concentration. So if you use anything above, you're wasting your time. You'll get the same effect then. If you use 80, if you use 90%, you'll get the same effect that you'll get with 70%. 70% is the maximal, is when you, the, the concentration that will give you the maximal effect. So in other words, if you use above, you're wasting money because believe you me, it costs more to have it more concentrated, right? So that's the reason why 70%, you get the maximal effect. Anything above 70, you're wasting money. You will not get any change in terms of the effect, in terms of killing of the bacteria. They have found that, you know, in terms of research. So that's why they use 70% alcohol. You get the maximal effect. Anything above 70, you'll get the same effect as you get with 70%. All right, so you all, you all got them half right. So let me see who got the half right, Miss Rock. You, 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 you were close, so all those who gave responses, I will give you credit. Who else? So shady. I know Michael gave gave a response as well. Shady, very good. Yeah. Anybody else who gave responses? Y'all were very close. So Dahia. Let me see. Dahia. Dahia with a D. Yes. Very good, Dahia. Right? So um, that is why you know that it is done in that regard. All right. Last one and then we finish. So where we are, all that. So we do all we didn't answer the question yet after all of that. So which of the following? Oh, I think we did. Have some multiply fat in the duodenum. I think we mentioned it, the bile salts. All right, so the last one. Let's look at the last one. 37. 
Which of the following organs function to remove poisonous substances and work to keep the constants of the blood constant? Which one is it? Liver. 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 Yes. Liver. And when your liver is going bad, what is it known as a disease in which you could actually lose a significant portion mm -hmm. of your liver cells? What is mm -hmm. that known as? It begins with a C. What are you saying? Who says cirrhosis there? Who is the first one to say cirrhosis? Huh? Eleanor. Eleanor. That was very good, Eleanor. I'm going to give you again credit for that. All right. Anybody else say cirrhosis? So, Alejandra. Who is that one talking? There? Well, maybe we, we, maybe we are, maybe we're not. Shanice. Shanice. Okay. Shanice Paul. Good. Anybody else? Piping with cirrhosis? Ravina. Ravina. Very good, Ravina. Okay, great. Anybody else? Kizzy, okay. All right. Okay, so we'd stop here for today. So I just want this as an alternative in terms of the lecture itself. You know, the lecture is recorded. You can have a you can have a look at the lecture, but this is just testing your knowledge. So in terms of going forward, this is one method which I want to um, employ or apply where we'll be going through questions, you know. Um, so what you do on your own is really have a look at the lecture. You'd have a look at the um, lecture slides. And then when you come into class, we'll actually just go in through these. And I'll have to see how I could apply when you answer the question correctly. I'm showing it, right? And um, I would see how I would apply those, you know, in terms of how I could apply that to your grade in some form or fashion, all right? So very good. Let me see who answered the most today. Who answered the most today? Eleanor answer. Eleanor and Miss Rock. Oh no, Ravina and Shady. I have eight. I have eight ticks for you all. And um, for Eleanor and, and Miss Rock, I have seven. Right? And it had other people who came in close behind them, but those were the two sets. All right. So you know, do keep answering any questions and I will send this site for you on the chat, okay? So what you could go through it on your own and when you're done, when you're finished going through them, the questions, you just submit it and you will get the answers. You can do it as many times as you will, as you wish. So, you know, you could always refresh it just to check your knowledge. When you submit it, you'll get your answers and it'll tell you which ones are correct, which ones are not. So you could go through this and as we go along during the semester, we'll go through the others, all right? So two things I will do. Let me stop the recording now. Um, that is one. Stop recording.